So now we have our route, and then let's go ahead and update our comic model. Because right now, our model, is, let's just look at it real quick, it's only got a little bit of information on there. It doesn't have hardly anything. It's got a title, a description, and an image. That doesn't tell us hardly anything. We want more data. We're going to have a lot more things on there, and this honestly is not going to be the end of this updating of the model, but we're going to go ahead and update it some. So I want a title, a description, uh, we want an author, and that will be a string. And in the long run, I'll go ahead and let you know we're going to expand this author part so that it's an array of creators, because oftentimes with comic books you'll have an author, and you'll have a colorist, and you'll have an artist, and you'll have somebody who does the inking, you'll have somebody who does the word, you got all these different jobs that could have but they're going to be different for each comic. Some comics are done entirely by one person, so you never really know. So it's important that here, that instead of author, this is going to end up being creators or something like that, and it'll be an array of people. But we haven't gotten into how to deal with arrays yet, and we'll handle that down the road. So title, description, author, publisher is going to be a string. Date is going to be a date. Series is going to be a string. Issue is going to be a number. Genre is going to be a string. Color is going to be a boolean. And then we have image down there at the bottom. And that is um, that is our new model. One thing to note is that our current items do not conform to this new schema, so we'll either want to update them or delete them and recreate them, and we'll do that in a bit. So the next step is going to be update our new view so that we can actually have all this data in it. So let's go ahead and look at that. Refresh this page, and this is what it looks like now. One thing I would like to do is to kind of make this a little bit better. So we're gonna go ahead and add a few things. Let's, above the form, let's add an H1. It basically just says add new comic. Something like that just to make it very clear what our users are doing. We're going to have the same form that we had last time. We're not going to change anything about the, the form tag. We're still posting to slash comics, but we need to add a lot more of these, um, of these inputs. So I'm really just going to copy and paste this a few times. Right now we have title description, and now I'm going to do a little trick. Let's see if this works in Gourmet IDE. It does. Cool. So I can click on that and then hit Command D and it will place another cursor selecting both of those so I can delete two at a time and instead of that I want author. See how that works? Command D is how I did that or I think it's Control D on Windows but I'm not sure. It lets you select the next instance of whatever you have selected. So if I select title here, Command D, it'll pick this one down here. So I want publisher. That also works in Atom and Sublime as well. I don't know about Visual Studio Code. I haven't tried. And then down here, instead of title, we want the date. And we're going to have to come back and fix this one because we don't want this to be an in, a um, text input, but we'll fix that later. And then we're going to have series and issue and then genre. And then if it's in color. And then we have the image right here. So after date is series. After series is going to be issue. After this next one, I'll go ahead and tell you this whole genre one right here. We're going to completely redo because we're going to use a drop down. But we'll go ahead and fill it in for now. Same thing with this one. For color, it's just going to be a checkbox, whether it's color or not. And then finally, we have the link to the image. So let's save and look at it and see what it looks like. There, a lot more stuff. Now, we obviously don't want this, um, all of these things. We don't want all this autofocus either. So let's select that and go to the next and the next and the next and delete all that. Good, I got them all perfectly. And then we also don't, let's see, do we need a placeholder for publisher? It wouldn't hurt. EG, DC, Marvel, Vertigo, etc. For the date, we do not we do not need a placeholder. For the series, wouldn't hurt. For the issue, we don't need a placeholder. For the genre, we don't need a placeholder because we're going to completely change this. For the color, for the same reason, we don't need a placeholder. We're going to completely change it. So let's save and refresh. There we 
go. So the next step is going to be to change the, um, the date because we don't want this to be just type in a date so they can put whatever they want. That's obviously not a very good date. So let's find the date and the type here is just going to be date. And that's really all we have to do on the front end. Refresh. And now you have this cool little date picker that you can click on and you can type in stuff or you can click right there and actually pick a date. So it's super handy. That's all we had to do there. For issue, we want this to be a number because issues are always going to be whole numbers. So let's refresh and now we can see an issue that we can't type. I'm trying to type letters, you have to believe me. It looks like it will let me type E because E is technically a number if you're talking about the constant E. But any other letters doesn't work, but I can type numbers just fine. So we've got the issue, and now we want to do the genre. Now the genre, we want people to choose from a predetermined list of genres, because as I mentioned up here, these are the only ones we want to include. We don't want people to be able to stick their own on there. We want them to pick from all of these. Now I know this is not all of them, but almost every comic will be able to fit into at least one of these. So we've got a genre, and we're actually going to leave these top two the same, but the input is going away entirely. We're not going to have an input. So instead of that, for the genre, we're going to use a select. Select is what you use whenever you want to use a dropdown. And our select is going to have a class. Class equals form control. Just like the others, that just tells Bootstrap again to control it. And that's for the genre. The name is genre. And then the way that you put up your different options in a select is just what you would think, options. So option. And there's nine options, so let's duplicate that. And we're actually going to come up with ten of those. Do superhero, manga, slice of life, oops, of life, humor, sci-fi, fantasy, horror, action and nonfiction. So you notice the top one is blank. That's because we want to have a choose below option. So let's save, refresh our page. I have a genre. Well this is didn't work correctly. What did I do wrong? I spelled form control wrong. So let's save. You can see that, that matters because now as I refresh it's nice and pretty. It wasn't pretty before. So now we've got all this and we can pick whichever one we want, but unfortunately we can still pick choose below. We don't want that. So we are going to come up to this option and disable it. Disabled. But that creates another problem when I refresh the page. It doesn't have choose below selected. It, are, it automatically defaults to superhero. And we don't want this because then if people aren't paying attention, they'll, they'll submit it and it'll have superhero selected and it may or may not be that. So we want to make them choose. So after disabling that, we tell it, even though it's disabled, this one is still selected. So refresh our page, and now it says choose below, and you cannot choose that, but it is selected. So once I click off, I can't get back onto it. So that's what we want. And the way that selects work is that you give it the name up here in the select, and then whichever option is selected, it will submit that text to as the genre. So genre will be superhero or manga or whatever they select from that drop down. And then the next one is color. We don't want color to be a text field. We just want it to be a checkbox. It's either in color or not. So let's do color and make it a question mark. And then the input type is going to be a checkbox. In it's class. We've got to leave form control, but we also want form check input. And I'm just getting all this from the Bootstrap documentation. I'm not pulling this out of my butt. I just looked it up in the documentation. Now you'll notice this is a little wonky. Some, something screwy is going on here. The reason for that is because I forgot to put form check up here in the container div. And again, this is just from the bootstrap documentation. So form group, form check, then you have your label, and you have your input. So let's refresh and try again. It's a little bit better, but it's still not what we want. It still looks like it's linked to image. So let's see what else I forgot. 20 minutes later. Oh, two other things. You have to take off form control from the actual input, and the input has to come before the label. Your label has to be after your input whenever you're using checks. The reason for that is because it kind of pushes it over to the side. Now we have whether it's color or not. Color yes, color no.
You can, if you want to, for your input, leave form control. And do that, and now you can see that's if you want it kind of prettier and off to the side. I don't like that, the way that, that looks in this form. I think it looks wonky and screwy, and I don't like it at all. So I'll leave that off, refresh, and now it's kind of like I want. So is it color, or is it not? And the link to the image is going to stay the same, and we can actually get rid of all of this as well. So now we've updated our form so that we can actually um, submit new data. One thing to note is that we are going to have to do some server-side parsing for some of these, such as the color boolean as well as the genre, because it's not lowercase. What these are going to submit, they're not going to be lowercase. They're going to be capitalized just like this, and we want them to be lowercase. It makes it easier if you store all of them in the database as lowercase just to check whenever you're querying it. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. In our app.js, we have the create right here. So right now we're creating a new comic that has just these three, but we're going to have to do more than that. We've got a title, we've got a description, we have an author, request.body.author. We have a publisher, request.body.publisher. Date, request.body.date, series is request.body.series, issue is request.body.issue, genre we're going to handle in a second, color, request.body.color, but that one's also different, and we'll look at that as why that is in just a second. So first off, we're going to handle genre. Like I said, we're going to make it lowercase. So what we're going to do is we're simply going to create a new const. Const genre equals request dot body dot genre dot two lower case. So we're taking the, the request dot body dot, dot genre g e n r e request dot body dot genre and putting it to lower lowercase and creating a new constant called genre, and then we're setting that genre here. Remember, this is ES6 shorthand that means this. We could do it that way. It's just less typing that way. And some of you might be thinking, why can't we just do request.body.genre.toLowercase right here? It doesn't work. Unfortunately, it just doesn't work. Whenever you're adding um, string methods, you have to do them separately and then add them there. You can't do it um, as part of the value declaration as part of the object declaration. So we've got that. Now we've got this color thing that's left, and I told you it's not going to work like we think it is, so let's go ahead and try it. So let's save that. It's restarting. It's good to go. Refresh. Add a title, a description, author, publisher, whatever. Issue 4. Now genre, we'll do humor. And then let's not check the color button. Submit. And let's see what is logged with the console. Color is set to null. Well, we don't want that. We want the color to be false, not null. And if we go back, let's see what happens if we submit it with the color checked. Uh-oh, cast a boolean failed value on at path color. The reason for this is because color checkboxes, when they are checked, they return on, which is a string. And then this error is coming from when we're trying to actually create it, comic.create, because it's expecting a boolean, because that's what we set up in the um, in the model, wherever the models are. Where are my models? There. In this model, we told it color is going to be a boolean. Booleans are only true or false, and we're telling it on. Well, that's not a boolean, so it says I can't do that. So basically it's saying, hey, something's broken, fix it. So instead of just putting that straight in, we're going to do a little trick where we flip it and then flip it back. What this does is this negates it. Remember, whenever you use the exclamation point, it makes it the opposite of what it truly is, and it makes it a Boolean. So right now, if, if they check it, it's on, which is a string, which is a truthy value. And then by flipping that, it makes it false. So we're going to flip it again to make it back to true. This is just a quick and dirty way, but that, it's actually very very easy and very common to take a value and turn it into a boolean, whatever the, the value of that um, value is boolean. So let's save this. We'll restart our server. 
Let's add another comic. And check our color like we did last time. And last time it threw an error. Let's see. This time it did not, and you'll see the color is true. And if we go back and submit it without the color, you see the color is false. That is what we want. We want it to be true and false. And that is it for this video. In this video, we did a few things. First off, we updated our comic.js schema to add several more um, key value pairs, several more parts of that schema. So now we got a lot more information. And hopefully, whatever you chose, you did something similar. You may or may not have authors and publishers, but I'm sure you can come up with multiple data points for whatever items you were making your Yelp clone about. We updated our comics new, which is a that form to add all of those different options in there. So now our comics new has a, is a lot longer and has a lot more um, information. We changed several of those. For example, the date and the genre to, to choose. We made one of them a checkbox, and then we also um, updated the route in our app.js so that it actually uses that new data. That involved a couple little um, parsing things, like for genre we made it lowercase, and then for color we had to flip it twice to get the Boolean value. I'm going to delete this console.log because we no longer need it, and then save, and we're good to go. As always, if you have any questions, please let me know. I'll be happy to help. Thanks.